The 2022 update for Illustrator on the iPad brings us again some amazing new features, like the Transform as Shape option, which offers a completely new way of editing curves, or the Blend tool with more intuitive controls. Join me to find out more about these and all the other new features of the 2022 release. I have to start with my favorite. The Blend tool is now available on the iPad version of Illustrator and it is very simple to use it, quite similar to the way you would do it on the desktop. So what you need to start with is two separate objects selected together and then from the menu on the right where you find the repeat features, now we have Blend as an additional option. Once you select this, it will automatically generate this new Blend group and the cool thing is that here on the iPad, you have actually much more intuitive controls to make changes to this group. So we can easily adjust the steps. So we can include more steps or less between these two shapes simply by just dragging that arrow up and down. But you can also quickly access the spine, which is that path between the two shapes. So we can easily move them around. And this almost feels like we are working with a 3D model. So when I turn this around, you can see it almost looks three dimensional. But there's a lot more, of course, you can do. For instance, you can select individual points, move them around and again, see all the changes updating live. So I can very quickly add a little bit more interest into these elements here. And if I want, I can even change the spine very quickly. So let's just use the pencil tool and draw another line, then select the blend group and this line together. And then from the properties panel, we can choose the option replace spine. And now the blend between the two objects is created along that path that we created. And of course, by using the direct selection tool, we can also adjust that easily. And once again, feel like we are working in 3D. Another amazing new feature is called transform as shape. And this works best when you have groups within your illustration. Like here, I have a group created for the head of this fox. And instead of using the selection tool, I'm going to switch to the direct selection tool. And notice that here at the bottom, we have this new icon. And once I turn that on, we get the transform as shape feature, which at first shows this really cool look at all the curves currently used in our composition. So every curve here is constructed as part of a larger circle. And we can see all of those circles showing up. But the coolest thing is once you start selecting things, let's say the ears in this case, we will be able to adjust them together. So Illustrator finds the similar shapes within this group. And in this case, I can even use the rotate view option just so we can see this better. We can very quickly adjust the ears, also this other shape on the ears or the whiskers. Again, if I click on one, all four of them are immediately selected and we can adjust their shape all at once straight away. And even shapes like these within a clipping mask, I can very quickly adjust, increase the size or make them smaller. And the same goes for the head as well, which is actually the clipping mask itself. We can very quickly adjust the shape, make it narrower or wider and so on and so forth. And you can see that the changes I'm doing are automatically kept in symmetry, even though we are not currently drawing in symmetry. So that is again, thanks to this new feature, transforming things as shape will automatically maintain the identical sides or symmetrical sides. Now, of course, you can always turn this off and then revert back to the default way that direct selection tool normally would work, where you can individually select anchor points and make changes to them. Vectorizing raster images became much easier thanks to the fact that we have this new option here whenever you select a photo. And this feature is using pretty much the same algorithm that we have for image trace on the desktop with all the options coming up here on the right, starting with defining what the source image is, whether it is a sketch, line art, logo, painting or photograph. Depending which one you choose, the settings will automatically change. And you can consider these as presets. Just remember, if you want to capture color information, make sure you go for painting or photograph. Since this was originally a sketch, I'm going to stick to this preset. And you can see that in this case, the color mode is logged into black and white. Then I can decide what I want the output to be, whether I want to create field objects or strokes. 
most of the time you will get slightly better results with fills and then with the rest of the options you can refine the tracing result so by reducing the threshold for instance we can have less of the original lines captured it usually reduces the density of the lines so we can go all the way down how it looks and then check when we drag it all the way up now you wouldn't want to use the highest or lowest value here because then it will completely turn everything black or white and by the way ignore white as you can see here at the bottom is automatically turned on which is a very useful option you wouldn't want to vectorize any empty areas and and then the rest of the options that we have here path corners and noise is really useful to refine details if you increase path and corners you will get more smaller details captured while if you increase noise that actually does the opposite it's going to ignore the smaller little details and it will simplify the vectorized result in this case I'm going to just adjust the value slightly and to be able to see what was the original image we can always tap on this eye icon which shows us the sketch or raster image and then tapping on it again we will see the vectorized version and if you wish you can actually keep the object in this state so you will be able to go back and refine the settings however if you want to make custom changes to the lines or maybe you want to fill colors in this illustration then I recommend to use the expand vectorization which would be expand on the desktop version and what this means is that now we can go in and tweak any detail freely either using the direct selection tool or any of the other tools like the eraser for instance with which we can very quickly tidy up the edges and maybe remove some details that we don't need don't forget that we use the default setting to generate fills instead of strokes so most of the time you can also use the blob brush tool with which we can very quickly add in additional details like here I can connect some parts of the illustration like the hair and close up any gaps in the illustration the good thing is that these are all going to be connected into the original shapes so they are not going to be generated separately one thing that I've been really missing in Illustrator on the iPad was the paintbrush tool but luckily now we have this also added and we can select it from the toolbar and even though we only have two categories currently out of the five that you would find on desktop it's already a big addition so we can use and create art brushes and calligraphic brushes at the moment let me show you how this works for instance let's select an art brush like this one called dry brush which by the way we can also favorite and then easily find it next time and once this brush is selected of course we can also select a color for it and then start drawing with it on the canvas similarly the selected brush is an attribute that is saved with this stroke so if we select it we can go into the properties and we can actually find it here under the stroke settings and we can always go back and change it to any other brush that we have in the document or the basic default brushes and although we don't have pattern brushes yet you can already sort of do something similar to it by creating your own art brushes like here I have these cool Halloween themed patterns and selecting this first one I can go to the brush tool click on the plus sign here and choose new art brush and then choose what type of scaling would I like to work with in this case I'm going to use proportionately and then saving the brush now I will be able to start drawing with it so once again because this is not set up as a pattern brush it's going to always just repeat the same amount of elements that was saved originally in the group that we used to create the brush with but I'm sure the pattern brush option is also not far away and the illustrator on the iPad team might make it also more intuitive similarly to what they've done to the repeat features previously another thing worth mentioning is that now we have rulers and guides and the cool thing is besides using the rulers to add guides you can also turn anything into a guide which means that you can even have shapes or diagonal lines set up as guides in this case for instance I can use the pen tool and following the angle in which we have this text we can draw a line and then while that is selected we can go to the object section and choose convert to guide both this one and the other horizontal and vertical guides we edit can be accessed from the layers panel they can be also quickly and easily logged from the precision panel so if I want I can lock all the guides or when they are unlocked we can also of course move them around and let me just move this guide a little bit further up here 
And then using the paintbrush tool with the calligraphy brush that has pressure dynamics assigned to it, we can easily start drawing these decorative lines that will loosely follow the guide. Of course, when you're using more precision tools like the pen tool, you can also snap to these guides that you create. Similarly to the desktop version of Illustrator, now you can also place Photoshop cloud documents directly into your Illustrator cloud documents. And whenever you do this, notice that there will be a little chain icon on the top left. And you also have additional options for the links here on the right. So you can relink them, update them, or even embed them if you wish to break the link to the original Photoshop Cloud document. And since we have a photograph placed in here, let's just try the vectorize option once again. And this time, let's set the source to photograph, which will definitely take longer to process since this is a high resolution image. And once we have the result of the tracing, we can zoom in and see the results. And notice that in the settings, we have an additional option called colors with which we can control how many levels we wish to introduce. And the original 255 was the maximum, but by reducing it down to something like eight, we will get a much more simplified version of the original photo. The lower this number is, the closer it gets to a monochromatic color palette. And last but not least, don't forget that you can also now share Illustrator documents directly from the iPad. You just have to invite people with an Adobe ID and then they will be able to give you feedback on your work and their comments will show up live as you are working right here in the comments section on the right side where you will be able to respond or even mark some comments as resolved. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.